Hi, I'm Emily. I live in London and one of my favorite things about living there is being able to travel so easily to other European cities. So recently I took the opportunity to take a little solo trip over to Brussels for a few days and here's everything I got up to. Hello from Brussels. I just arrived on the Eurostar literally like 20 minutes ago and I took the metro to my hotel. I thought I was just gonna be dropping, dropping off my bag, but I got lucky and got to check into the room. Let's do a quick room tour before I unpack so that I don't make it a mess. Okay, so first up we have the bathroom. It's pretty nice. I wonder if there's a place to put that. Oh, there's a another shower head. I was like, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna be tall enough. Okay, anyway. Okay, then we have a little place for our luggage a desk area, bed, and the best part is the view. How pretty. To be honest, it's actually looking out onto like a street with construction happening, but if you don't look down, stunning. And then we have the wardrobe. Wait, <laughs> who is this man? That is so funny. Just, there's one single picture in this room and it's this random man. So this is my second solo trip in like two months and I'm loving them like i just think they're so fun um and i decided to come to brussels just kind of randomly because it's on the eurostar line and i've been to amsterdam and paris which are also on the line and i thought i would just round it out i was planning on only staying one night but then i was kind of just like you know i don't know when i'm gonna be back here so in typical me fashion i extended my trip at the last minute so this hotel was booked so i'm actually moving tomorrow to a different hotel so i'll show you two options but anyway it's lunchtime and i'm hungry so let's go find somewhere to eat we're heading to an Indonesian place, which I think will be good. But don't get it twisted, I will be having Belgian food, including waffles and chocolate at some point. Okay, I've eaten and now it's time to explore. I began my exploration by heading to arguably the most iconic place in Brussels, the Grand Place. Okay, we are at Grand Place. You're gonna have to excuse my pronunciation this entire trip because I do not speak French. Oh, there's someone busking. Anyway, I'm taking a walking tour tomorrow so we'll find out more about the history of everything. Um, but today I'm just here to see it. Keeping in mind that I've been in Brussels for two hours, it's giving me Paris meets London meets Florence. Well, this part reminds me of Florence a little bit just because it's like very touristy and like beautiful buildings. But yeah, Paris, London, Amsterdam. I don't know why I have to compare it to everything. I, it can't just be its own thing. I need to like pin it down, but vibes are good so far. Shall we get some Belgian chocolate now? I think we should. Okay, this is the first of many, I'm sure. I read online that Mary's is a good one and I asked for what they recommended and I think this is milk chocolate with hazelnut. Oh my gosh, so good. Then I walked over to the Royal Galleries to do a bit of window shopping. Hello, welcome to the Royal Gallery. Lots of cute shops in here. Then I made my way up to Monte Art. Again, you'll have to forgive my pronunciation, but this place has an amazing garden and a beautiful view of the city. Thanks for staying there. Glad no one stole you. We have a mission. I just remembered that I forgot to bring my European outlet converter so now we have to find one of those so i continued my exploration all the while keeping my eyes peeled for somewhere to buy an outlet converter and at this point i was really just following my heart and i ended up stumbling on one of my favorite places in brussels now which is park to brussels this installation of comic book statues is temporary but it was really cool to see you're kidding me i love this oh my gosh 
Yeah, your girl just loves the little bandstand slash gazebo moment, what can I say? I feel like this video might just be me sitting in different locations, but if you watch my New York video, do you remember this? I'm on a bench. I just got this sparkling peach drink that I think is really cool. It's in a can, but it's clear. Never seen that before. <laughs> Let this be your reminder to bring your converters. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot mine, but anyway. It's only six euros, which isn't that bad. I went to one place and it was 15 euros, which I was not about to pay. So I was like, oh, that's okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, hopefully this works though. You are currently on an espresso machine. So that's what this is. <laughs> Okay, I'm back in the hotel room for a bit. Just need a little bit of a rest before dinner. I'm gonna get some frites for dinner, I'm excited. I feel like I wanna do a whole video about solo traveling because I, it's something that I've become very passionate about in the last like couple years. For me, one of the most daunting things about solo travel is actually not like the navigating yourself or, you know, like the planning or whatever. Cause I actually really like, I'm, pretty independent person I can figure that out and I like doing my own thing and I'm introverted so it's just like a great fit but the thing that stresses me out the most is eating out and just generally like what people think of me being by myself which I'm like becoming way less concerned with <laughs> like I feel like when I first started doing it I was like oh my gosh everyone thinks I'm so weird and I have no friends but I truly don't think anyone cares and like I think this about solo travel and just about vlogging in public and stuff like if you watch my I think my New York video was when I first like really did like a solo vlog but I was like so concerned about talking to the camera in public and stuff and I just have decided like it is such a waste of energy to care so much about what people are thinking about you that you, they're not going to see you ever again probably in your life would you rather spend your energy trying to look cool in front of these strangers that again you'll never see again or would you rather enjoy yourself and have fun and make a video if that's what you like to do and you know document your time for me that's a much more um, beneficial use of my energies. Again, I'll touch more about this in a whole solo, solo travel video, but just a few, just a few thoughts. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna rest up for a bit and then I'll see you for dinner. Okay, let's go get some grub. I'm taking the metro over, so I'm actually gonna try and show you how it works. They have contactless here, which I really, really like because you don't have to worry about getting, um, getting a ticket or anything. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and film it. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, first things first, you need to know which metro station you're heading to. Then you need to know the number that you're looking for and finally the destination of the metro. Next, find the big M and then once you're down into the station, look for the numbers that you need and then you can just tap your contactless credit card and then find the platform of the metro going to the right destination and you're good to go. On my way to get frites, I stumbled upon yet another beautiful park. Brussels apparently does parks really well and how cute are these little babies? Anyway, I saw lots of people eating their frites here, so I knew I was close, and I thought it was a brilliant idea to actually bring the frites back there, but first I had to wait in the long queue. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> frites are secured. The line was really long, and I would like to tell you that it moved quickly, but it did not. I think it was like 45 minutes or something, but let's hope they're worth it. I'm on my way to the park. I got two sauces to try. I'm not sure which is which. I think the left is the Andalus and the right is the Samurai. This is the absolute best angle we're gonna get for this taste test. First up, the lighter one. I think it's Andalus, I'm not sure. I like the lighter sauce better. I'm still not sure which is which and the frites themselves were amazing. 10 out of 10. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think it was worth the wait. Okay, so I'm back at the hotel, I'm in for the night, and I'm gonna put this little contraption on the door that stops even people to have a key from getting in. Um, I mean, I generally pr feel pretty safe at hotels, but lots of people have keys to these doors, and you just never know. Here's it in action. See, it stops even though the door can open. Good morning, let's get some coffee. I started off day two very strong at the cutest coffee shop called My Little Cup. It was in a really cute area, the coffee was amazing, and the pastry was even better. 
Okay, we are in the Grand Place again to meet up with the walking tour. And there's a truck behind me. On the tour, we learned a lot about the architecture of Brussels and a lot about Belgian history, which I have to say I was very uninformed about before. Then of course we had to try some Belgian waffles and apparently they're usually served without toppings, which I really can't argue with after trying it, it was delicious. Brussels was bombed in 1695 and this statue mannequin piss was still standing so it has become a symbol of resistance for Brussels. Brussels is also full of street art so we got to see some of that. And very excitingly for me, we got to try some more chocolate. You look at it, you buy it, you look inside, you look at the back of it. It's really experiment, you have to take the time to enjoy this. 70% dark chocolate. That brings a bit more bitterness to your experience, mm -hmm. you see? This is a... And finally, we went to the Cathedral of St. Michel and St. Gudula. I'm so sorry for that pronunciation. Okay, I just finished the walking tour. I learned a lot and hopefully I remembered and put it in the video. Um, and it was really good. I really liked the guide, so I will link it below if you guys are interested. And now I'm heading to lunch to hopefully get some traditional Belgian delicacies. <laughs> this restaurant came highly recommended online and by my tour guide, so I decided to give it a go. I tried a beer. It was peach flavored because I don't like beer, but my waiter said it was fine. And anyway, I did try traditional beef stew. I just moved into my new hotel and it is nice. Wow. This is the Hotel Indigo City, Brussels. And they were having a deal on booking.com, so I got it for a good price. And I'm very impressed so far. It looks very chic. Okay. Front door, mirror, bathroom. I love the color scheme and everything. And then here's the bed. Obviously it's quite small. Um, I did just book like a single, well, I guess two people could stay in here, but it is quite small, but anyway. This is the little bar area. And I guess, I think this is also the wardrobe. There's no, um, oh yeah. Well, you could put a, fit a few things in there. On the TV and here we go. Okay, I don't want to lie to you guys, so I'm not gonna. I did just take a nap. <laughs> I'm really not much of a big napper, but I gotta be honest, I did not sleep well last night. And this bed is so comfortable. As soon as I sat on it, I was like, uh-oh, we're down for the count. Anyway, so I took a quick nap. I'm feeling so much better. I was really low energy when I got back here. Um, so yeah, I'm about to head out for dinner. I was still pretty full from lunch, but I wanted to try some cheese croquettes and I also wanted to sit outside and this restaurant gave me the opportunity to do both. After I finished up my dinner, I walked around in this very trendy, cool neighborhood with lots of restaurants and I got myself a little boba tea. And then I swiftly started losing energy. If I'm honest, I'm kind of wondering aimlessly at this point. <laughs> I think I might go back to the hotel because I really want to see everything lit up in like the Grand Place and stuff. But I, I'm just walking around seeing stuff I've seen before. But I did want to pick up some chocolate for my flatmates. So I went back to the Royal Galleries and then I decided, you know what? I should probably not go back to the hotel. I got some chocolate for the flatmates from Mary's. Good news, I decided to be ever so slightly less lame and come to the park instead of the hotel to wait till the sun sets. It's currently 7.45, sun sets at 9.30, which is so late. So I'm gonna hang out here till that happens and then go look at all the sights in the dark. I almost forgot, I brought my chocolate to the park. I just got one because I am very full, but. Mm. Mm. That's really good. I'm putting the name on the screen. I sat in the park for quite a while and then I headed to Monteart for the sunset, which was a great move, if I do say so myself. And then I went to go see the Grand Place all lit up. So the sky is 
still light, but I feel satisfied. I saw the lights on. It's almost 10 p.m., so I gotta, I gotta get to bed, okay? I think if I had it to do over again, I don't think I would stay in the same area because I just flat out don't like this road that leads to my hotel. Like, it's just, it's, it's, feels perfectly safe and everything. It's just like a bunch of chain stores and restaurants. And earlier it was like super packed. It, it gives kind of like Times Square vibes. And that's just not the vibe I'm going for. And you have to walk through this area to get to and from the hotel. So I would maybe stay in a different area and I'll leave some on the screen of the areas that I did like. However, I'm sure they're gonna be way more expensive than the area that I'm staying in. But just thought I'd mention it. I feel like if you're staying like just a few days and you're not going to be going back and forth to your hotel that much it's not that big a deal but if you were staying for like a few days and you wanted to be like you know pop down get a coffee at a cute place or like be near cute cafes that's not really this area this area is more like chains like i'm looking at a mcdonald's and a lego store right now truthfully i'm not convinced that there's anything better in the world than being in a hotel room in a robe getting ready to tuck yourself in and read a good book i mean that is Chef's kiss. I'm gonna make some tea. Do y'all want any? Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed Brussels. I am, like I said, I think I've said this a few times, I'm going to Bruges tomorrow, so that video is coming next. But I wanted to split them up in case you maybe are only going to Brussels or only going to Bruges or something like that, and you just wanna see just those. Um, yeah, I will definitely let you know how it is. I'm just doing a day trip from here to Bruges and back and then back to London. So it should be a busy day. Oh, and be sure to subscribe if you like solo travel videos or if you are interested in London. I live in London, so I make a lot of videos about London or just want to follow along with me. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And um, of course, like the video, you know all the things. Okay, I'm gonna let you go. Bye.